take over our government. They are the people. Now, being the people that they are, they're not going to do that because they swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and our leaders. It would be, I tell you, it would have to be pretty bad before I think the veterans would do that. But I can tell you, the veterans are patriots to this country. Let me just clear that up for all you viewers on the internet, all you liberals that are screaming and kicking the table right now. They are patriots. But I'm going to tell you, they stand at the ready. And I know that because I'm a veteran. And they are. They're standing at the ready. But, you know, our veterans may not only have to defend us against a tyrant, you know, our government, they may have to, looking more so every day, defend us against some outside force that's going to come in. But the government, I believe, and I really believe this, I believe that Obama is trying to collapse America. If you look at everything... If you look at everything that he's doing step by step, it's all to collapse America. He's going right down that checklist. And at this point, he just doesn't care who it offends. He's just going to do it. He doesn't care if it's legal. He's just going to do it. And, and that's fine, that, you know. But we're, we have guys, I'm telling you, you'd be surprised what's out there. And they don't mean any harm toward the government. They're not traitors. They're not somebody who wants to come in and say, okay, we're taking over the government. They're not, they're not doing that. But what they are is they're ready for the fight when the fight comes. And the left, Obama knows that. And so they do everything to make these guys the villain. They want you to see them as the villain. And the other thing, one last thing about that, they've always hated the benefits that the military get. Well, they earn them. They put their lives on the line, okay? And in that socialist movement... They want you to take, and they're already trying to do it, take the benefits from the military to give to the, let me just say this, you got me here, Bob, on the internet, and give it to the slugs who won't work. Well, sir, I'll tell you the same thing I've told many of my friends that are veterans. I'm not a veteran, but by golly, if you go, call me. I don't know what I can do, but I can cook, I can clean, I can carry ammo, I'll do whatever I can to support you. Thank you, thank you. Well, let's get back to that most important job, cooking. <laughs> Could we have more examples of American exceptionalism? Well, I think as far as you can look around you every day and see American exceptionalism. Uh, not all of our teachers are socialists. Many of them are great patriots. And they do a wonderful job of teaching our kids. The prime example was Atlanta, Texas. Of course, we talked about the military. We talked about the police. Not all the police are, you know, there's a few bad apples everywhere, okay? But our police do a wonderful job. They put their lives on the line every day. I could go all day long. American exceptionalism. You don't have to be a fireman, a policeman, a teacher in the military to be an exceptional person. Let me just tell you. People in this room have jobs. You have jobs. And you know what your job does. I don't care what your job is. Your job does something to support a company. That company makes money. They pay taxes. They keep our economy strong. With that, the military can buy bullets and beans. That's American exceptionalism. See, we have pride in our work. Other places around the world, they go to work, they do their thing, they draw a paycheck, they could care less. In America, and I know you were taught the same way I was, I grew up incredibly poor. When I joined the Navy, I had one shirt, one pair of pants, no socks, and a pair of tennis shoes with left toe torn out. I spent six months on my first ship, never left it because I had to send my paycheck home to support my mother and my little brother. We were poor. My education was horrible. I could barely read and write. No. I educated myself, went to college. I did that on my own. Why? Because I had an exceptional mother and grandmother. Grandmother couldn't read. Okay, I remember her walking me around a hot summer field, going to a lady's house, handed her when the lady asked, what can I do for you? Wear the bonnet. My grandmother pulled a letter out and said, I received a post today. I hoped you could read it to me. She couldn't read. But she taught me not to look down to my nose at people who had more than I had. 
They probably worked for it. They earned it. And she told me, if I want more, get out and work for it. That's American exceptionalism. This is not a question. If voting changed anything, voting would be illegal. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I would agree to that somewhat, but I would say no, because they're using our system against us. If you believe Obama won re-election, I have some land for sale, okay? There's no way. I've watched, I've, I've, big, I've looked at too much of this. Maxine Waters had a testimony, she had a hearing, but she brought in a guy and they testified, I think I mentioned this the last time I was here, and they found that this company had some software that they could put into the machine that would give you a 59 I'm sorry, 5149 outcome. That's all you had to do, is put software in there. You could tell it what outcome you wanted, it would give you the outcome. Now, everybody knows Miss Waters. We know her. Is there anybody in this room who thinks that armed with the information that you have this software that you could put it in this machine and you could win the re-election, which, is there anybody in here that thinks that they were going to risk the first black president in the United States not being re-elected? Really? That would imply that he's a failure. That can't happen. So, is there anybody who really believes that Maxine Waters didn't use that software in their behalf? Not, not likely. Not likely. Thank you. After reading news today, I was discouraged. I needed to hear this message of exceptionalism. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Do you have a solution reinstating our constitutional militia? I don't have a solution, I guess. I haven't sat down and figured out a solution for that, but I'm going to tell you what has to happen, is we have to be a lot more aggressive. They're very aggressive on the left. We have to be a lot more aggressive. When's the last time you saw a Tea Party? Where, where's the Tea Party at now? I emceed the St. Louis Tea Party. I went up there, Dick Morris was there, I introduced Dick Morris. But I went up there with my radio co-host, and we emceed that. We had about 26,000 people turn out, okay, underneath the arch. Why haven't we done that lately? And here's another thing that gets me, is when we do have a tea party. Man, I tell you what, I've gone to some tea parties, and I'd stand there, and I'd listen to the people that they had come up and speak, and I thought, you, why are we here? Why, why did you bring this line of people in? Everybody's saying the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Motivate people. You're our army. That's the one thing I learned in the military is if I wanted my guys to perform, I had to come out, I had to pat them on the back, and I had to give words of encouragement. I had to motivate them. I had to inspire them. Where's the tea party? Where's it at? We need a tea party. And I tell you what, you put it together and you call Mike Lee, and I'll even say a whole lot more that I didn't say today, but... How do you respond to the claims that the Constitution was not written in a way that all people are or should be treated equally? And the second part of the question is, do you think the 14th Amendment is necessary? Well, let me put it this way. I can't really respond because I'm in a church. Um, I believe the Constitution as it was written. Our founding fathers were absolutely inspired. And I mean this. I believe our founding fathers were inspired by God. I believe that. There is, there is nothing like it on the face of the planet. As far as the amendments go... There are many of the amendments that I agree with, but there are some let me just say that we're not inspired by God. I think that when we start looking at the amendments, we're looking at people who came together and they made these amendments 
So they were they were padding their own bed. And we're going to see, I'm surprised we haven't had several issues now, especially since they have the power and they don't care what they do that's illegal. I'm really surprised that they haven't gone some way to try to even add and change the Constitution more than it is right now to put some ridiculous things in. Let me tell you something. I am a true blue, freedom-loving person. And I really believe, I mean, I'm very moral. I go to church. And I believe in treating everyone fairly. Everyone. I have said many times when I was in that black church the other day, one of the things I said is, you know what? And they agreed with me wholeheartedly. I said, racism exists because we teach it to them. And not us on TV. You can take a room full of children from every race, put them in a room, raise them up. There's not going to be an issue. It's not going to be an issue until we set them down and tell them, they're so, oh, by the way, you're supposed to hate him. And if you don't, you know why you should hate him? Because look what he did to your ancestors. Okay? That's essentially what they're doing to us. That needs to stop. I support anyone. I'm very conservative. I don't believe... I don't believe in alternative lifestyles. So if you want to be gay, that's your right. You can do that. That's between you and God. And I'm not going to try to lynch you or anything else. I don't care about that. If You know, I'm a sailor. If you want to rub your 5 o'clock shadow with another guy's 5 o'clock shadow, knock yourself out. I don't really care. But don't ask me to tell my kids that it's okay because it's not. Okay? I know someone who's in the military now. I know several young people. And it's appalling. I have a hard time with it. Even as early as this morning, talking about some issues where they're in the military and they have just been inundated in his unit with gays. And I don't mean, you know, if you're a gay guy or a woman and you keep it to yourself, and the military, by the way, has always had them. And do you know that we always knew who they were? And that was okay because they were patriots like us and they did their job, but they kept it to themselves. I don't go in and talk about my intimate life. I don't want them to talk to me about it, okay? But what they've done is they've not only Obama infused the military with this huge group of homosexuals, some of them, flamboyant is the nicest thing I can say about them. And that's just crazy that we have that person in a uniform acting that way. And that person, as of today, I had a conversation with someone. That flamboyant gay member of the armed forces is able to stand and say things and talk about things that the other sailors would never be allowed to talk about. And that's just wrong. I believe in the Constitution. I believe in equal rights. Equal for everyone. Not some to give them the upper hand. I don't believe it. This is our last question. What is your opinion of why the U.S. government has purchased up so much ammunition and stockpiled it when everyone knows the ammo they have purchased is not ammo the government can use? It's a simple question, and there's a simple answer. So you can't get it. That's why. So, oh no, I don't have any ammunition. I, I don't have any at all, okay? That's a lie. I've got plenty. And they'll never find it, okay? However, that's why. They don't want you to have it, so he's going out and he's buying it up. So you can't have it. The, his goal was to disarm us. I'm just going to tell you the way I believe. I have no proof. But I believe in watching what he's doing and the group of people that he has encircled himself with. What seated U.S. president would put self-confessing communist in his cabinet, in his administration? Unless he was a communist. But I think it's worse than that. I believe in my heart. For a long time I would say he's a communist, he's a communist, he's a communist. I don't think he is. I think that he is a radical Muslim. And I believe this is for one purpose, 
It is to, he's here to collapse the United States and to squash Christianity. Amen. That's his purpose. So, you know, they're going to try to buy up, but I got news for them. There were a lot of people bought a lot of ammunition. And let me tell you something else. I say this all the time. I don't believe this is going to end without fighting in the streets. And it's not going to be the conservatives attacking people. It's going to start with us defending ourselves is what it's going to start with. But let me just tell you something. There's going to be one of two things happen. There's going to be a lot of ammunition to be picked up out there when it happens. It's either going to be your ammunition they're picking up or their ammunition you're picking up. So you're not going to need very many rounds, not where you're thinking, because there will be ammunition out there. And I would tell you, start buying Whatever you can get, put it away so that you have it. Because, and not just that, water purification. I taught survival in the military. You need water purification. You need food stores. You know, I, I, I speak to a lot of different churches, a lot of different groups. The Mormon church puts away, they talk about a year's supply. And they do that because not only something like this may happen, but you may be unemployed. You may need it. Okay. But I can tell you, I know people that have two-year supply, three-year supply. And you're going to need, like I said, you're going to need all that stuff. And don't forget, I'm going to tell you now, maybe this is an appropriate place to say it, but I'm going to say, when you put your emergency kit together, guys, ladies are going to pat me on the back in a minute. Do not forget the sanitary napkins. <laughs> Nobody puts that in there because they're multi-purpose. You can use them for bandages, and of course your wife will love you for it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the invite to come back. Thank you, Mike, for that. Uh